Law Warrior Armor Double Feature Challenger 10 MBT Overview During the clan invasion of the Inner Sphere, two of the Inner Sphere's largest weapons manufacturers, Calon Industries and General Motors, made a bold decision. Realising that the Inner Sphere might not be able to produce enough refitted battle mechs to stem the clan thrust, they instead decided to devote some resources to producing new conventional vehicles. Apparently, they reasoned that the greater ease and lower cost of manufacturing vehicles would enable the Great House armies to flood the battlefields with them and overwhelm the clan Omnimax by their sheer numbers alone. Many existing vehicles received field refits or minor modifications as part of the effort, however Callon and General Motors also decided to design an entirely new, super-heavy main battle tank that could go head-to-head -head with most mechs. The Challenger 10 main battle tank is that vehicle. Capabilities The Challenger features an impressive mix of speed, firepower and durability. A GM XL engine powers the tank, though that power plant is quite expensive, it does provide the Challenger with enough speed to evade elemental attacks, a particularly dangerous threat for a tank unit fighting the clans. The Challenger's streamlined, low-profile turret houses an array of powerful weaponry. A Poland main model A Gauss rifle provides tremendous long-range punch, especially when paired with the accurate and efficient Imperator Code Red LB-10 autocannon. A Federated 10-shot long-range missile rack slaved to an Artemis fire control system provides the Challenger with striking power at extreme ranges. The rest of the vehicle's weapons provide highly effective point defense. These include a pair of forward-mounted Martel medium pulse lasers, side-mounted Federated Super Street missile racks, and a rear-mounted Exostar small pulse laser. A staggering 14 ton of Calon Unity Weave ferrofibrous armor provide the Challenger with unmatched protection. A turret-mounted main fire point defense AMS system provides additional protection against enemy missile attack. Deployment Calon only recently began full production of the Challenger at its factory on Kirklin. As a result, only a few units, such as the Davian Heavy Guards RCT, possess any of these, and curiously very few of these vehicles have reached troops in the Lyran Alliance, and instead appear concentrated among units in Davian sectors. Sources of the Calon factory claim that they lack jump ships available for military traffic in their sector, and this has created the distribution pattern. Regardless of the reason, it appears that the Challenger will see action on the Capellan front long before it appears on the Clan front. 3058 Upgrade Overview During the Clan invasion, two of the Inner Sphere's largest weapons manufacturers, Calon Industries and General Motors, recognised the need for new vehicle designs that could counter the Clan threat. Rather than compete with one another and potentially lose the lucrative contracts to come, they cooperated and produced an entirely new super-heavy main battle tank that could go head-to-head -head with most mechs. The Challenger 10 main battle tank is that vehicle. Capabilities The Challenger features an impressive mix of speed, firepower and durability. Powered by a GM XL fusion engine, the Challenger has enough speed to evade numerous and dangerous infantry and elemental attacks while carrying a powerful array of weaponry. A Poland main model A Gauss rifle, paired with the accurate and efficient Imperator Code Red LB-10 autocannon, provides tremendous long-range punch, especially when coupled with the Federated 10-shot long-range missile rack slaved to an Artemis fire control. The rest of the vehicle's weapons provide highly effective point defense, including a pair of forward-mounted Martel medium pulse lasers, side-mounted Federated Super Streak missile racks, and a rear-mounted Exostar small pulse laser. A staggering 14 tons of Calon Unity Weave ferrofibrous armor provide the Challenger with unmatched protection. A turret-mounted main fire point defense AMS system provides additional protection against enemy missile attack. In deployment. The Challenger is produced on three different worlds, and even then supply has yet to be able to keep up with any demand. Challengers currently serve in every heavy armored regiment in the AFFS, and a number within the LAAF. Unsurprisingly, the Challenger serves in great numbers within the Davian Assault and Heavy Guards RCTs, but over the past decade has become the backbone of the heavy armour forces within the Federated Suns, and this tough tank has proven itself time and again. Variants Two major variants of the Challenger exist. The first came about when the AFFC initiated a study to test the Combine-developed C3 computer system on the Challenger series, GM stripped out most of the weaponry and its equipment, leaving only the turret-mounted Gauss rifle, and this made room for a second Gauss rifle, 
a front-mounted ER medium laser, and the Wunderland C3 master computer system. It wasn't long before the AFFC and GM jointly realised the power of the system and rushed the modified 11 into production. The 12 model debuted several years later during the Fedcom Civil War. A less radical design, it replaces the LB-10s with a rotary autocannon 2. The LRM-10 becomes a 15-tube launcher and replaces the two streak launchers to a single turret-mounted streak 4, and strips out the rest of the weaponry to mount a pair of ER medium lasers, a Guardian ECM suite, and a C3 slave link. Notable crews. Kashira Reginald Surabachi. Then Gunshow Reginald Surabachi claimed a heavily damaged Challenger 10 abandoned by the 6th Lyron Guards on Garstedt during Operation Bulldog in 3059. Though he never managed to get the tank into battle on that world, just a few years later, when the Ghost Bears struck the Combine, Surabachi got more than he bargained for. Assigned to the Ryukengo, he and his tank fought for a short but bloody campaign against the Bears before being uprooted and transferred to the Combine Sun's border to repel Duke Sandoval's invasion, and shortly afterward to defend Matsuida from Blakist agents intent on overthrowing the Inner Sphere. Plagued by continual transmission and suspension problems that leave his vehicle immobilised more often than not during heavy combat, Surabachi nevertheless rushes up into close battle to bring the full force of his tank's firepower to bear, even if that means being immobilised amongst a superior enemy force. Sanitarium The exact history of the tank known as Sanitarium is unclear, but by all accounts it was assigned to the 8th Fedcom RCT just prior to that unit's retreat, from second try in 3057, and then remained within the unit until the Caffle Flashpoint. From there, the tank was captured and recaptured by each side a dozen times over, and additionally saw combat on Tikhanov and New Avalon, before finally ending up in the 10th Flyer and Guards. What's notable is that no crew has survived more than a single battle in the vehicle, some killed by enemy hands, some by their own, as reports say three crewmen committed suicide, while at least half a dozen others perished in training accidents and Firearms mishaps. That's the big boy, the Challenger 10. Its mass is 90 tons, its movement type is tracked, and its power plant is the GM270 XL fusion engine, giving it a cruise speed of 32 kph and a flank speed of 54. Armour is the Calon Unity Weave Ferrofibrous. Its armament is a Poland main model 8 Gauss rifle, a Imperator Code Red LB10, two medium pulse lasers, two Federated Super Streak. SRM 2 racks, one Federated 10 shot LRM launcher, one Exostar small pulse laser, and one main fire point defense anti missile system. Its manufacturer is Calon Industries and General Motors, and its primary factory is Kirkland, Cathal, and Salem, with the communication system being the Wonderland 35 2 series, and its targeting and tracking is the Calon lock on with Artemis fire control. This translates into a cruise of three and a flank of five on the table with 10 heat sinks, keeping everything nice and cool. Its armour factor is 251, which translates to 57 on the front, 50 on the sides, 37 on the rear, and 57 on the turret, making it quite a thick slab of meat to cut through. Weapons are located, as it says, the Gauss rifle in the turret with 16 shots of ammo in the body, the LB-10 also in the turret with 20 shots in the body, so plenty of ammo there for the two main guns. It's got its LRM-10, which is also in the turret with its Artemis fire control of the turret, with 12 rounds of fire, for the LRM-10. The AMS is in the turret with another 12 rounds of fire. Two medium pulses located to the front of the vehicle, a pair of Streak 2s, which you can see in the image there on the side, and the ammo for that is 50, so 25 per launcher in the body, with the single small pulse in the rear. It's a very large, very chunky tank, but at 90 tons, that's to be expected. Um, it doesn't in any way, shape, or form resemble the Challenger, <laughs> which you see a real Challenger. I've got to admit, though, challenges are quite big bastards. Uh, and this this isn't any different. It, look at the size of the wheels on the thing, and the little running gear and the wheels in the middle. But um, the side-mounted Streak 2s, um, uh, the, the launches on the art look absolutely massive. So these are some big old tubes they're firing. This is... It's just a solid, really nasty, hits you and you feel it tank, and it can take a lot of damage in return. It's not going anywhere anywhere very quickly, but still, a movement of five hexes at a straight line on some battlefields is more than enough to get that Gauss rifle into range, and then you can just sit back and, and reap the rewards of, uh, of all that nice firepower. Uh, definitely the kind of tank I would use uh, 
maybe narratively, but it would also just be something maybe I'd use as an end of campaign uh, sort of opponent for players, uh, or something I would allow the players to have in a mission where they might be going up against, um, you know, larger number of enemy forces and that kind of thing. So they've got a big vehicle to, to fall back on, uh, to use for support fire, that kind of thing. So it's not bad there. It's uh, its ammo is pretty decent in my opinion. 16 rounds of, of combat for the Gauss rifles more than enough. And um, yeah, the LB10, uh, even if you split that, that's still 10 rounds of, of shrapnel, 10 rounds of uh, solid shot, so that's pretty good. And then factor in the uh, 12 rounds of missile. So its ammo is, is decent. And uh, yeah, the AMS protects it from any incoming fire from lock-on weaponry, so it's got a bit of uh, longevity uh, extension there and as I said with 57 armor on the front obviously the biggest downside of any of these vehicles as big and scary as they can be the first couple of hits if you start rolling motives that's really gonna obviously affect the vehicle overall and that's gonna be its biggest uh, downside is once it gets incapacitated it's uh, just a case of risking uh, the the approach or uh, staying at range and, and trying to like dump missiles on it, that kind of thing but yeah, it's it's still a bit of a it's a still a dicey proposition while it's got the Gauss rifle. So yeah, I think the best thing is trying to get up close to it as soon as possible and trying to punch your way through one side or the other, and uh, <laughs> hoping for the best <laughs> when you uh, when you start getting shot by it. But uh, yeah, not a bad tank. It's uh, it's pretty good, straightforward, uh, nasty killer, and uh, yeah, it's got an interesting background. I like the idea of the cooperation between the two companies and uh, their their sort of outlook of of the more logical idea within within Battletech of like, well, why don't we just flood the battlefield with tanks because they, they mount the same weapons as mechs and they're cheaper and we can just, you know, send 50 tanks against a load of clan mechs and they'll probably just through attrition just either heavily damage or kill all the clanners before they finished off killing all, them, all the tanks, you know. So, yeah, it's uh, it's not a bad idea by the companies, and uh, had it have come to that, I think that's ultimately what would have stopped the clans in the end, just the, the sheer attrition of it all. They wouldn't have had enough warriors or materiel to replace their losses, whereas the Innisphere can just keep pumping out tanks, you know, day after day. And uh, it doesn't take as, as much training to get a tank crew together than it does for a mech warrior as well, for instance. So, yeah, not a bad outlook. It makes sense. But uh, thanks for listening, as always. That's the Challenger, and uh, we finish off the last of the tanks here in 3058, and um, we'll be solely focusing on the the entries in 3060 uh, after the next couple. So thanks for listening, as always. Have a good week, and I'll uh, catch you next time. Bye-bye.